Hare Krishna. So we are very grateful that all the devotees uh, have taken out their time, especially for this yatra. I know you all are in different setup now, adjusted, and it's been for some of you we're meeting after even ten years slowly. Actually, for some of them we are meeting almost like ten years later. So uh, in this, we had a plan that uh, since majority of us have entered into ashram, rest ashram, and some of us are also planning. So with that mood, we scheduled this lecture by His Grace uh, Vishwaru Prabhu. And maybe in some time, Mataji also will be joining, Prabhuji? Mataji will not be joining. Okay. So Prabhuji will be continuing. So I'll give a brief introduction of uh, Prabhu. We know Vishwaru Prabhu. As soon as we hear your name, Prabhuji, everybody remembers Barsana. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we'll, I'll just give a brief introduction about the... Uh, Your Prabhuji. voice is very low, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Is it better, Prabhuji? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Ram. Hare Ram. Ram Ram. Hare Hare. Prabhuji, you can increase more volume. Okay. Yes. So, Prabhuji's legal name is Dr. Vivekanand Shanbag. Prabhuji is a Brahmin initiated disciple of His Holiness Radhanath Swami Maharaj, and we know Prabhuji's spiritual name is given by Gurudev, His Grace Vishwaru Prabhu. He did his MBBS from Mumbai University in 1985 from Grand Medical College, JJ Hospital in Mumbai. He did his fellowship in palliative care and hospice administration from San Diego Hospice. California, USA in 2007, postgraduate diploma in psychological counseling in 2009, different positions which Prabhuji holds is, uh, you know about the, uh, he is the deputy director of, he is the deputy director of Bhaktivedanta Hospital, just a sec. He is the deputy director of Bhaktivedanta Hospital. And he is also the trustee of uh, Sri Chaitanya Seva Trust, under which almost 12 different hospitals run under the leadership of Bhaktivedanta Hospital. He is the head of the Department of the Spiritual Care and Palliative Care and Hospice. And uh, Ramshan Prabhu was remembering you very intensely, Prabhuji, when he gave us introduction about the spiritual department. He was remembering you very intensely. He told us several past times also, <laughs> where you were also involved. And uh, in the philanthropy work, Prabhuji is pioneer of uh, Bhaktivedanta Hosp Hospital's eye services in Barsana. We all know Barsana eye, uh, eye care which, uh, and dental camps which happen every year. So they do almost like 3,000 to 5,000 operations, free free surgeries for all the Vrajavasis. And uh, now even a new Bhaktivedanta eye hospital is coming up at Chiksoli, Chittasaki's house. And Barsana, academic qualifications, briefly, you all know he's a teacher at palliative care, end-of-life care, spiritual care in nursing. Spiritually, Prabhuji has been this very senior. In, in fact, uh, one of the founding uh, spiritual counselors of Radha Gopinath Bhat Samaj from 1989 for all the consultant doctors. So the doctors which we see all around in Bhaktivedanta Hospital, majority of them have been brought by Krishna consciousness by Prabhuji. So now regularly he's featured on different different televisions, like you all know Hare Krishna TV and all that. And Prabhuji is always busy. Even today, I think Prabhuji has some talks somewhere in Africa, somewhere, you know, Zoom talks keep happening. So Prabhuji, we are really grateful that you have taken out your time. And with that note, we would like to hear from you. We have time till 9, 8.55 till 9 p.m. Prabhuji. We know that you also have some other schedules. Tight schedule, so no, I am uh, available. Yes, Prabhu. I am available, and so, you need to also introduce me to the audience. Introduce audience to me. In yes, brief. yes. Majority of them are Prabhuji IIT graduates. They have done their bachelor's or master's or PhD from IIT Madras. Some of them from different IITs, IIT Kanpur, and all that. And majority of them are now married. So Mataji is are sitting on the other side. I think okay. camera. Prabhuji, the camera will have to go a little bit. Mulli Prabhu, the camera will have to go a little bit. Mataji is also could be visible. Mataji can come ahead, na? Please, you don't want to see Prabhuji. Prabhuji wants to see. Yes. 
So Matajis are also sitting, Prabhuji, and the other system is also online. Matajis are sitting the other side. This side we have Prabhuji, and total number is around 30, 35. And now majority of them are coming from South Indian background, from Tamil Nadu, from Andhra Pradesh, some from North India also. Yes, Prabhuji. And uh, we would like to welcome you, Prabhuji, by our usual traditional way, by three times loudly chanting. Aribo. First request, can you occupy the front seats? Everybody, Matajis and Prabhujis, please occupy the front seats. Please, Ajay, Ajay, Mataji. Prabhujis also can come. Hare Krishna. Om Ajnati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Ye Natasmai Sri Guru Ve Namaha Sri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sapitam Ye Nabhutale Swayam Rupak Kadamayam Tadati Swapadantikam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advai Tagadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so I am uh, deeply grateful for inviting me amongst you. It's a great honor to address such highly qualified gathering. And uh, my first apologies for not wearing kurta because I'm in the Himalayas right now. And I had, did not know that there will be something like this. So it's nice to see all of you in dhoti kurta, but I am in warm, warm clothing because it is very cold here. I'm at Uttar Kashi at Ganeshpur in the lap of Himalayas and Bhagirathi Ganga. So first and uh, nice thing to be happy is I'm also a South Indian, like you all are South Indians. I'm from Karnataka, Udupi, born in Mumbai, but belonging to uh, that part of India, very loving, holy place. And another common feature between you and me is that I also had got admission in Bombay IIT in 1980. And due to some family circumstances, I was unable to join, although I got admission. And you will be also happy to know that because I could not go to IIT, I was regularly visiting IIT on weekends to meet my friends who could join IIT. And there only I got preached and I became a devotee of Krishna. <laughs> so it's a very unique situation. I have got a very, uh, what do you call, very soft corner, loving place in my heart for IIT. And I always... Uh, I always adore and be happy to connect with IIT in any way is possible. So our topic is regarding uh, Grihastha life. To be precise, uh, you must have known that details of the topic. Some principles to make our Grihastha life very happy. First of all, we have to know, we have to know that uh, the Vedic system is such that life is divided into four parts. Brahmachari, Grahastha, Vanprastha and Sanyasi. And in olden days, there was a good balance between Brahmacharis and Sanyasis and Grahasthas. But these days, we find majority of people becoming Grahasthas and a small fraction is becoming Brahmacharis. And brahmacharis constitute, sorry, the grahasthas constitute a major portion of society. Wherever you see, you see grahasthas first and very rarely when you go to some ashrams or some spiritual 
organization, you will see some renounced people, young, middle-aged and old. So we all belong to Gunastha Ashram and all the ashrams, Chatur Varanyam, Maya System, Guna Karma, Vibhagashama. All these ashrams and varnas are divided equally based on Guna and Karma. And the purpose of all the ashram, purpose of Brahmachari ashram, purpose of Grahastha ashram, purpose of Vanaprastha and Sanyashi ashram is only one to become Krishna conscious and to love God. So Brahmacharis have as much goal to love God as much as we Grahasthas have a role to love God. So they have to love God through their ashram of Brahmacharya and we have to learn to love God through our Grahastha ashram with wife, children, in-laws, husband, wife, all, all the situations. So, in category, no ashram is higher or lower. But there are some basic differences. The rest ashram is the only earning ashram. Brahmachari, Vanpar, Sanyasi are not supposed to earn any money or keep any bank account. The rest ashram is only ashram where um, we earn money and we treat people at home. Grahastha Ashram has a house. Grahastha Ashram has difference in the, in the sense Grahastha has a house, rental or permanent. There is a roof over him. Grahastha that means Kshetra means it's a source of income. Grahastha has to have a source of income to maintain his family. Grahastha Suta, that means there are children Sutta means actually son, but the broader sense is Santan, that is children. Apta, that means relatives, because when two families come together, boy and girl come together, they have two, two sides. They also get united in the law of wedding. So Apta, Apta means relatives. And to maintain all this Grah, Kshetra, Sutta, Apta, we need Vitta, we need money. <clears throat> so this is the uh, basic constitution of Grahastash. Uh, as we have a limited time, I will just straight come to the points which can make happy Grahastha life. First of all, there has to be good understanding, mature understanding of each other between the husband and wife. This is very relevant to people who are also going to enter in the Grahastha Ashram in future. Because today when we see young couples getting married, the first and foremost thing is lack of understanding of each other. Rasta Ashram is meant for mutually encouraging each other to progress in Krishna consciousness and mutually make each other happy. That is the purpose. The husband has to think that I need to make my wife happy. The wife has to think I need to make my husband happy. And both of them have to think we have to make our children happy. And both of them have to think that we have to make our relatives also happy. But the primary goal is to think that husband should make wife happy and wife should make husband happy. Most of the unhappiness in today's Grahastha Ashram because, is because the wife wants to make herself happy and the husband wants to make himself happy. When this is the basis of coming together, there is bound to be unhappiness, guaranteed, written like a line on the stone. They will be unhappy. Married life is based upon the selfless meditation on how to make my partner happy. And when you attempt to make the partner happy, automatically by the mercy of the Lord, you become happy. When you think about each other from the selfish point of view, what I will get, what is my take home or what is my gains in this relationship of wedding. Then from point one, moment one, hour one and day one, there will be fights and there will be unhappiness. So this is a, please, please take this principle very seriously. If this is the beginning of our foundation of Grahastha Ashram, 
then you can expect some happiness to come in the future and lot of happiness come in the course of time. Lady is the person who leaves her home and comes to the house of the husband. This is the foremost understanding of wedding. I can uh, speak this subject very confidently because I am a man. I am on the side of husband. I mean, I am a husband. So it will be effective if I speak this matter. And all, all of you young men uh, will need to understand this matter very well. As husband, I don't go to a new house to stay. And I don't have to adjust with mother-in-law, father-in-law, brother-in-law, sister-in-law. And the new environment and the new culture and the new situation, new financial situation also. And she also has to learn to adjust with the personality of the husband, understand him. So, in a joking way, they say that the husband comes with big barat, you know, big procession with many people supporting him. And the wife comes alone to the house of the husband. And she has to adjust with mother-in-law and father-in-law and the culture, the behavioral culture, the financial culture, the cooking culture. So, if I'm also, I happen to be a priest. I do weddings and many other samskaras officially in Iskon. So, in the wedding ceremony that I perform, 75% of the ceremonies are to empower the girl or the bride. 25% are only the samskaras to empower the boy. Why this is so? Because 75% of the duties of Grahastha Ashram are done by the wife. Because she has to first become wife and serve the husband. Then she will become mother and she has to serve the children. Before even becoming mother, she has to serve the mother-in-law, the father-in-law, or brother-in-law, or whatever frequency of connections they have. She has to take care of everybody. She has to understand everybody's nature. She is the person who will be in charge of cooking. She will take charge of kitchen naturally. She will take charge of finances naturally. She will be the person who will spend and economically run the show. She will take, give birth to children and she will give samskaras to children because when the child will learn the language, we don't call father tongue. We call it mother tongue. Because it's mother's language which the child learns first. If it is the same language, then it's okay. But if it's different language, then child will pick up mother's language first. So similarly, the child will pick up mother culture, not father culture first. In bringing up children, the influence of mother is much, 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 much more dominating compared to the influence of the father. All the culture, whether it is spiritual or social or caste-wise or country-wise, is given by the mother to the child. The father comes up at a little later stage to give discipline and uh, Discipline-like culture. So we ought to understand when we bring a girl or lady or a bride home as our wife, we have to be very sympathetic and very empathic and very kind and compassionate because under our husband's shelter, the wife is going to perform all her duties. So what is husband's duty to make the life of Grahastha happy, Grahastha life happy, is to give protection to the wife. And protection does not mean only physical protection. It does include physical profession, physical protection. Because by nature, the lady is a, a weaker sex in the sense of bodily strength. And they are very emotional, they are very loving. And they are very, uh, very kind towards the children and other family members. They are naturally soft-hearted. And men are supposed to be strong, uh, decision-making, and conflict resolution, solving any uh, security problems, 
So major duty of husband is to protect. And protection is first physical, second is emotional. Very important because the wife will undergo many kinds of uh, conflicting emotional situations with mother-in-law, with father-in-law, with sister-in-law, with brother-in-law, with new culture and the new house. Every single thing. So she needs emotional protection. She needs social protection. Whenever you go out to any any place out of the house, the wife is uh, wife is under the protection of the husband. And last is uh, and most important is spiritual protection. Husband has to uh, inspire by his own example, less by words, but more by example in Krishna consciousness. Husband has to inspire wife to progress in Krishna consciousness. Wife. Although doing many, many duties, a variety of duties at one time, they have tendency to get attached to family matters more than men. Men are more inclined towards renunciation and knowledge. But women need to get encouraged. Women need to get appreciated. Women need to be understood. Women need to be emotionally protected. There are so many uh, conflicts that can, can come up with different relationship which he is struggling with to settle down. First is husband himself. Second is mother-in-law. Third is father-in-law. Then sister-in-law. There are various, um, so to say, by the arrangement of the Lord, these, these relations are very unique to give us deeper realizations about the realities of life. So it, it's sometimes very tough to deal with situations and all the time, I urge you, all men, to see that you stand by your wife and become a balance between your parents and the wife. Because any word that she utters will be like taken like Ramban. It goes deep in the hearts of your mother and father. <laughs> Anything you will say, if, if it is even if it is same thing. The parents will not mind because it, they love you as son. There is a psychology uh, explains. I've done a diploma in psychological counseling also. Psychology explains that why there is conflict between usually uh, the daughter-in-law and the sister-in-law and the mother-in-law. Because there is one object called husband or the son which is now going to be shared by the wife more possessively than mother and a sister. So, the mother feels, I raised him with on my breast milk and so many years of culture and now he's listened to his wife. So, the mother is competing with the daughter-in-law to have emotional possession of the son and the wife naturally being in higher rasa, like conjugal rasa. The mother is in vatsali rasa and wife is in maduri rasa with the same person. So, what happens is, we know scripturally that Madhuri Rasa is higher than Vatsali Rasa. So, naturally, husband is inclined more towards his wife, less towards his mother. Not that he is in love, but naturally, after wedding, there is more inclination towards the wife and less towards mother because he already grown up. So, this conflict starts because of sharing the object of love. And both parties want to possess the object of love equally or more than other party. So, the husband role becomes very, very crucial. Very intelligently he has to handle to keep mother happy and to keep his wife also happy. But more so, because if his wife is alone in the front of the big team of in-laws, he has to protect her and make her confident and make her secure that I am there with you. Don't worry. It's not just words. He keeps saying dialogue morning, evening and night. I love you and I protect you. I am with you. I am with you. She has to feel it through your actions. When there is difficulty, you have to prove by your actions that you are on her, on her side. And intelligently, even the mother feels that my son is home. I own my son. It's a very tricky situation. And many times when the husband is not able to protect, there are cases I have seen as a counselor. There are divorces. There are permanent household tensions that the husband and wife go through and the children which are born also go through the same kind of tense situation they see between 
their grandmother, their mother, their father, and they get confused and they have imbalanced in their personalities. So all this is important to understand in one word that you have to be right there in action to protect your wife. A lot can be said between the uh, relationship of husband and wife. That is why the um, I, as I understand that when marriage takes place, immediately the boy and the girl, they go out on, on so-called honeymoon. Major purpose of this honeymoon is to develop bonds of relationships. To develop deeper bond of understanding with each other. It is not just to have privacy for physical relationships. That is one of the part of Grahasa Ashram. But more important is to bind each other, to understand each other, to develop. It's like, it's like formative years of wedding, to develop relationship with each other. When there is good foundation of relationship and understanding between the newly wedded husband and wife, then they can tackle the next challenge at home level, financial level, every other level. Both of them need to understand that we are here to serve each other. We are here to take care of each other. We are here to protect each other. We are here to love each other. So the bond of love is very important. It should not be selfish based on a physical gratification. It has to be uh, very much selfless to, to keep other person's welfare and to uh, love the other person and to, on the basis of love, to inspire other person in Krishna consciousness. The very purpose of coming together is to love and do devotional activities towards Krishna, the Supreme Lord. As long as Sri Krishna is dominantly the center of the Ashram. I use the word dominantly because Sri Krishna is not the only per only person in the center of Grasta Ashram. There is uh, affection between wife and husband. There is affection to children and the family. There is affection also for bodily enjoyment. Attachment is there. That's why I said when as long as dominantly the relationship between husband and wife is Krishna or the center of the relationship is Krishna, then you can assure that you will be happy for a long time. If there is any other purpose or any other center of a marital relationship other than Krishna dominantly, then you are yourself deciding that you will not be happy. If physical relationship is the center of the relationship, Soon you will be frustrated. If money is the uh, center of the relationship, oh, I married because my husband is very rich. I married because my wife is very beautiful and very from rich family, famous family. I married to a girl of a very famous personality, politically or business point of view, financially. Then sure enough, there is going to be conflict and unhappiness. So, we need to prepare our mind much before wedding that my wedding, wedding event itself, the ceremony itself and the wedding life, wedded life, married life is going to be centered around Krishna. It is going to be Krishna conscious. Let us all uh, resolve, even if we are, I'm like now almost 40 years married and uh, my marriage was quite Krishna conscious and Life has been very Krishna conscious. So I am at the end of the 40 years also, I am very happy, very satisfied and uh, content in what we received in our married life. I pray and wish that all of you, even after 35, 40 years of wedding, should feel the same. That I was lucky to get a good partner. I was lucky to have a good relationship of Krishna consciousness. We both progress together in Krishna consciousness. That is should be your goal right now. If you don't have the sankalpa or understanding that you want this, it is not going to happen. Because you are a devotee, your wife is a devotee. When you come together, your devotional life doesn't become double. It becomes 11 times more. This is like a poetic statement, but it has deep meaning behind it. When you come together, your seva, your Krishna consciousness should multiply, multifold. 
when your marriage life is successful, if after getting wedding, your chanting becomes poor, your seva becomes poor, you are coming in the company of devotees become poor, then we have to understand that yes, our married life is failing to the purpose, very purpose of it. And all the time, the meaning and the purpose of wedding life is given by you two only and nobody else. The counsellor may be inspiring you, helping you by his example. But to make it happen, to make it happen successfully, only the two people are involved, that is husband and wife. If the husband and wife are con Krishna conscious, then only Krishna conscious children can be born. The children who are born are the souls who match the collective consciousness of the husband and wife. Collective consciousness, it is physical, spiritual, social, all kinds of conscious varieties, varieties of consciousness are matched by the soul who comes in your womb. That is why we are advised to have good physical fitness, not any disease, or prepare healthy conditions to conceive a healthy child. We have to be mentally balanced and peaceful. We have to be uh, intellectually spiritualized and we have to be reasonably highly Krishna conscious to attract a healthy, mentally balanced, uh, spiritually inclined, good soul of good character. Whatever collective character two of you or two of us have, that kind of character the soul will have who will be attracted to you. So, it is not just coming together like cats and dogs and to have children. It's a big science. How to have a great soul in your womb and how to raise the soul in great character. So, we cannot have a child who is higher than us in Krishna consciousness. The child will match with us. And then the child with his effort will make progress in Krishna consciousness with your guidance, cultivation, culture, attention, association, everything, everything. So, raising children is one of the most important activities in Grihastha Ashram. And to the degree you are Krishna conscious, your child will be Krishna conscious. And as I say again, you can speak 10% and you can behave 90%. That is the best kind of preaching to children. But generally we speak 90% and behave only 10%. And the children are watching every moment how papa chants, how mommy chants, how much she, she or he sleeps during chanting, how much they talk during chanting, what time they chant or what do they do, what do they wear, what do they, where do they go, which parties they go. Every single thing the child knows. And they are also going to temple with you. They hear all the philosophy. And then the question, today's children question parents, what are you doing? Why are you telling us to do? First, you have to be Krishna conscious. Some children are also saying these days, it is not a big obligation or big upkar that you have done by giving birth to me. You were lusty to, with each other. You had enough lust and desire. That's why we were born. You have invited us. So better take care of us. This is what the children are talking today. Why, why they talk like this? Because they don't see an inspiring example in their father and mother about Krishna consciousness. The words, the actions, the character that they notice, it's not very inspiring for them. That's why they speak like this. At the, at the, at the same time, the external world that they are living in, they are getting educated in, is very, very uh, cutthroat, materialistic world. Kali Yuga is full in action. So they have a lot of outside influence. So if you want to be happy as husband and wife and as father and mother, you have to create a strong Krishna conscious culture at home. A basic but sincere deity worship. Basic altar at home. Offering nicely on time in a systematic way. Bring worship together and of behaving with each other, husband and wife, very cordially and lovingly in front of the children, with each other, which they watch. Because what the husband does to wife and what wife does to husband, the children pick up very fast 
and the same thing they replicate when they get older and get married because ideal whatever ideals of grahastha ashram are not by hearing lectures but what they see in their father and mother, uh, mother and father so if you want to uh, create a krishna conscious child you have to be very highly krishna conscious and you have to be exemplary in your words action and thoughts if for example i went to uh, my brother in laws uh, my uh, god brother's house one day with a lot of devotees doctors and suddenly uh, his mother called up this is very important from the point of view of culture for our children this is why i'm telling the story to you the suddenly phone call came from jammu kashmir or somewhere of his mother the host so the host went and took the phone and long time it didn't come and then we realized that we just peeped in so he was crying on the phone for long time and then sobbing and crying the phone call ended and he came mopping his eyes and we all naturally asked why you were crying so the answer that he gave this is my dear friend uh, god brother uh, his grace ragunath prabhu who is now in amritsar so he said we are in mumbai for many years my parents live in amritsar punjab and whenever we call there is tears of love i miss my mother my mother misses me my father misses me and then we made a important statement i mean it was a really genuine uh, event and uh, tears were flowing really genuinely out of love and missing the parents and then he made a very important statement he said if my children today will see me crying on the phone call to my parents tomorrow they will also cry when i will call them on the phone that means what very very deep statement that means the kind of relationship and respect i show my parents they will show you when you will grow old and you will be away from them so we need to treat our mother and father like the wife treating her mother in law and father in law and the husband treating his father and mother in such a way that our children should get an a, a, a practical example a girl girl if is born to you she will get a practical example how to treat mother in law father in law sister in law if you get a boy then he will learn how to treat mother and father after wedding because everybody says that after wedding the boy has changed he used to love me before now after wife has come he is neglecting us so all that we do these are the principles of making our grahastha life happy do not forget this these things are very important this will also will help you to in grow in your krishna consciousness also if we are normal and vedic in our day to day relationship with our family members which includes wife husband children in laws mother father everybody when we do that in krishna conscious way in ideal way natural happiness comes in and then to add the happiness that we already created in the foundation way you have to call vaishnavas at home and treat them nicely feed them prasadam speak to them sweet words converse them on the topics of krishna consciousness it is said grahastha life or a household without vaishnava guest is like a ghost house there is no charm there is no krishna consciousness there is no happiness when we however poor we are however financially difficult condition we may have we need to call senior vaishnavas or friend vaishnavas feed them prasadam show our children that how to treat guests how guests are important atithi make our house a temple of the lord they make give meaning to our life so regularly there should be guests coming and similarly when you call people people will call you and you will also go as guests to them and spend time in krishna consciousness next item of i am just a uh, big big topics i am covering in only few lines but next item of bringing lot of joy in the house is to share part of our income in krishna conscious services that is called as dana because uh, all of us earn money and 
the money brings in contamination because sometimes we have to cheat to earn money. Sometimes we are lazy. Sometimes we are insincere. Sometimes we don't perform well. And uh, so knowingly, unknowingly, by inevitability or the situations are such that money brings in some contamination. And uh, before we bring, uh, before we make devotees of that money, we should have a sankalpa of donating some part of the money in Krishna conscious services, in service to Guru and Vaishnavas, in service to the Lord, not just philanthropically, but in the Krishna conscious uh, dana. Uh, donations. When we donate a part of our income in Krishna conscious services, the remaining money is considered to be purified. And when we eat roti of that purified money, our consciousness also becomes purified. Because money has lot of influence on our consciousness. Money can bring in amazing kind of destructive consciousness or destructive activities. The consciousness may be affected very seriously if the money is not uh, pure money. So we should earn in a very sincere manner and uh, legitimate way and still after that also we should donate and get the purest kind of dhan to maintain our family of wife, children, husband, mother, father, education, everything else. Another important part in Grasa life to be happy is to go out on pilgrimage regularly with family members to visit the uh, places of Lord to in the association of devotees to hear about the Lord, to visit the places of Lord's pastimes, to have prasad there and also to donate over there. Because regular visits to the holy places gives us great upliftment in Krishna consciousness and also the need of a break to go to go out of the regular situations and uh, have some break is very important. So the material need also is satisfied and the spiritual need also is satisfied. So, so I touched upon many important points of how to become happy in in Krishna in in our Gurusta Ashram and the activity of developing. Uh, intelligent knack of relationships uh, to develop relationships comes by association of sincere devotees. So the grahastha, because he is busy some hours earning money, some hours in maintaining his family and you know taking care of them. So naturally a grahastha has less time than brahmacharis and sannyasis to focus on Krishna consciousness. So, if you want to be really happy, then you have to plan your day, your month and the year very intelligently, giving its due importance. The time should be allocated for spiritual sadhana and spiritual progress and service to Vaishnavas and Guru. Krasa has to be very determined and focused also primarily in Krishna consciousness. There are many priorities. Like you have health as important priority, you have uh, your duties towards wife and children and parents as important, your duty to earn money is important and duty towards the Lord is important. But among all these important things, you need to understand what is, how to create the priority, how to make the items in priority list. And a uh, wise grahastha who knows the secret of becoming happy, will always put Krishna consciousness as top priority. Spiritual sadhana as top priority. Becoming Krishna conscious as top priority. When that is kept as top priority, Krishna will look at you as top priority. If you keep money as top priority, then Krishna will not be looking at you as his top priority. Ye yathamam prapadyante tam stathaiva vajamyam so, keep Krishna consciousness as top priority. Then family, taking care of family. Naturally, health is included in that. I would say third priority will be money. Money is important, no doubt about it. But if you don't keep money as first priority, it will bring in a lot of evil in your life. So keep money and that too also earning pure money, donating money. If you keep this priority, 
I'm I'm telling you grossly. You are intelligent people. You can also, but primarily keep Krishna consciousness as top priority in your life. Then you will see when wife will see you as you having Krishna as top priority. You will see wife having Krishna as top priority. Both will be inspired. Steadiness in happiness in in Rasta life only comes with good substance of Krishna consciousness between the two. Because Krishna is only eternal. That's why Krishna is in the center. The relationship will give you long-term happiness. If anything else comes as priority above Krishna in Grasta life, that will start giving you unhappiness right from beginning. So, this is a very big subject. It can be a seven-day seminar of three hours each. How to be happy in Krishna, how to be happy in Grasta life. But I have uh, tried my best to concisely tell you precisely exactly what are the cardinal principles of becoming happy in Krishna consciousness, in Krishna, in, in Grasta life, how to become happy. So if there is any time or scope to have questions, I'll be happy to take questions. Hare Krishna, Guru. Thank you very much, Guruji. It was very enlightening. Louder, please. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guruji. Thank you very much, Guruji. It was a very enlightening session and uh, especially you gave it in a very power-packed manner. Uh, there were so many points which you truly said would have taken a low in three hours for a week or itself. Uh, we'll take uh, one or two questions, Guruji. Some relevant questions, practical questions which are... I am available. I am no hurry. I am in a vacation period in Himalaya. So, you decide your schedule and as per that you schedule your questions. Yes, Roji. So one or two questions we'll take, Roji. If our devotees have any practical questions, anything which is, you know, devotees, those who are planning to enter into uh, Grihast Ashram or those who are already there, even they can think of any questions which is coming to their mind. Roji is always free to explain things in a very practical manner. So please take advantage of that. Yes. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Uh, am I audible? Tell your name and uh, speak louder. Uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, am I audible now, Prabhuji? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, thank you so much for this wonderful class. Very uh, very concise, yet very powerful. Uh, and uh, so many so many wonderful points, each of which we can contemplate very deeply. And uh, there's so much to uh, apply as well. So, Prabhuji, one uh, question that I have is with Riss. Uh, my my name is uh, Anadi Akshay Krishnadas, and uh, uh, one question that I have is um, that Grihast Ashram, like we all have to go through our um, uh, purification and some form of uh, destiny and karma uh, through through the ashram, be it Brahmachari, Grihast Ashram, whatever it is. So, and primarily Grihastas, we have to deal with so many worldly things, uh, including family relationships, work. Uh, etc and uh, all these can become medium of uh, for for purification uh, for our karma to come through and so there will be challenges there will be difficulties there will be provocations uh, and uh, our our anarthas are tested and uh, so all that uh, so i i wish to know uh, like uh, how do we handle such uh, difficulties or challenges be it in relationships or in work i mean i've, I've given a very broad uh, question Prabhuji, but uh, i i hope you understand so uh, your broad question i have to on, answer in a very concise way in a precise way you can have a seat please so uh, grasta life is designed to ultimately make you feel renounced and dedicate your life at the feet of krishna so the process will be always, uh, the path will be not traded, I mean, laid down with roses and rose petals and pollens of roses or lotus flowers. There will be a lot of thorns also. And how do you tackle these challenging situations in Grasta life? The only answer is by Krishna consciousness. If you are strong in Krishna consciousness, you have heard from scriptures, your sadhana is very strong. You have heard stories of Lord Ram and Sita and the Pandavas and Draupadi 
and so many famous successful ideal couples in the scriptures and uh, you, you may not feel they are irrelevant today but you have, you have taken the principles from uh, the hearing of their life through kathas and lectures you will get an example for each and every situation in your life how did lord ram behave how did pandavas behave at different different times you know their life was not easy lord rife's lord ram's rasta life was very difficult pandavas rasta life was very difficult pandu's rasta life was very difficult but today also we see their glories why because in in the times of most testing situations they always behaved as per scriptures and as per guidance of holy saintly people so how do we tackle our situation always keep a saintly guide a friend philosopher and guide it can be uh, if possible guru maharaj if he is available or senior devotees who are experienced or sincere devotees and experienced grahasthas always keep yourself under their guidance and follow their guidance sincerely do not think i know more i understand more i am more intelligent than my senior devotees around me if you get up early morning chant hari krishna and read scriptures every day at times when there is no conflict or no challenge you will be able to face the situation of challenge when it comes like in the military it is said if you sweat in practice during peace you will bleed less during war similarly when apparently things are okay one should be very sincere and strong in his sadhana so that when difficulties come challenging conditions come you face it in a very peaceful krishna conscious way any difficulty in the world can be solved only in krishna conscious way by these seminars and by this you know materialistic uh, life coaching which is based, which is not based in krishna consciousness it's only a what do you call a superficial eye wash the depth of conflict resolution or depth of uh, solving challenges in life is only there in krishna consciousness so if you are highly krishna conscious you will be able to sail through all kinds of difficulties of your life it could be financial it could be interpersonal relationship it, it could could be conflict between daughter in law mother in law and you are sandwiched in between it could be fights amongst two families which you are involved in it could be disease it could be health crisis it could be anything you can survive being highly krishna conscious i can tell you i had a um, divyanga child i had a child who was born crippled born cerebral palsy and uh, it she she was my daughter would never get become normal that was the situation was diagnosed and the whole world of devotees and relatives were asking why such child should come to you why krishna has given the child to you you are sincere devotee why krishna is giving you but the spiritual master his holiness radhanath swami maharaj gave us such a wonderful insight that this child is a very special child dear to krishna number 1 and number 2 krishna has chosen you as the entrusted parents to take care of his special child krishna trusts you that you would be able to take care of a special child these two things change the whole picture of pity and self pity and empathy or you are crying why me only all this changed and the such a difficult challenge of life was uh, i won't say solved but was handled very happily and blissfully and not to happily blissfully but as a blessing of the lord what could have been considered as curse karmic curse was considered as blessing from the lord special blessing and so much of spiritual realization so much of insight so much of tolerance humility acceptance surrender all took place 
because of spiritual guidance, highest kind of spiritual guidance. So your, all your, I mean, this life, this child lived, my daughter lived for 20 years. All, all 20 years bedridden. So we, we also aged 20 years from our, in our life. And believe me, I, I can tell you from my heart, it's almost one year now she has left us. But even today, both of us feel that we were blessed to have such a child. Consideration of Krishna for both of us as trustworthy to take care of his special child and special beloved devotee. She never spoke, she never uh, could see properly, she could never stand and walk. So serving her was a great question of seva at home. But that vision, insight was given by the spiritual master who turned the picture completely from uh, apparent curse to a divine blessing, life fulfilling blessing. So difficulties will come, difficulties is part of material life, difficulties is part of grasa life. Difficulty part of any life in material world. And how to become blissful in the middle of most intense difficulty is the science of Krishna consciousness. Science of Krishna consciousness is will, will teach you at the deeper course of Krishna consciousness. It will teach you how to convert your so-called challenges into opportunities to become blissful in Krishna consciousness. The situation of challenges will remain and will continue to remain. But you can remain blissful in the middle of the existing continuing misery of your life. I can, I can assure you, the more Krishna conscious you are, the more blissful you will become when more difficulties will come. When Kunti Devi says na, that Vipada, Santuta, Shashvat, Tantra, Tantra, Jagat Guru. Oh my Lord, let the difficulties come again again. She is not backing a dialogue scripted by somebody to impress you and me. She is talking from the heart, out of experience, out of her Krishna conscious, deep Krishna conscious life. She is speaking from the heart. Let the difficulties come again and again, my Lord. Because she has experienced all the difficulties, how she could face it beautifully how she could remain blissful in Krishna consciousness in spite of all the difficulties because of Krishna being in their life. Which for us means being Krishna conscious in our life. Accepting Krishna in our life. So I pray for you that you should be able to uh, dive deep into the philosophy and pastimes of Krishna consciousness and derive strength and nectar to face your own difficulties, applying those learnings from Krishna's life, Ram's life and other scriptural stories. And I pray for you that you be always blissful even there is difficulty or no difficulty. Suke duke bule na ko padone hari nam korore in happiness or sorrow, chant the holy name. Keep yourself at the feet of the Lord and you will sail through very blissfully all challenging situations of your life. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Roji, one more question. Yes, yes, please take. Please, as many as you like. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Prabhu, uh, are you able to hear me? Loudly, please. Prabhu, I am. Hare Krishna. My name is Vishal. Vishwambar Vishal Das. Uh, so, in, when we stay in the community of devotees, like we have many other God brothers and other devotees, so we have a lot of services also. Like you, you talked about balancing relationship between mother, husband and everything with uh, mother, uh, wife, like that. But uh, we also have to balance relationships with devotees and also services and preaching programs. And at a point of time, the family people feel that we are not giving time to them. And if we are only at home, then the other devotees in the community where we are, 
they'll feel that oh this prabhu doesn't do any service so how do we do this? how do we prioritize how do we balance it is not very difficult again you need to make priorities you need to make priorities how to divide your time first and foremost you should give time to your family as i told you earlier first and foremost is to time to krishna by giving time to prime time to chanting and your krishna consciousness you have to give time to your wife i missed that point in my talk do give sufficient time to your wife and wife should give sufficient attention to husband don't deprive them of time time is uh, very essential in developing good bonds of love and understanding time there is no option to time there is no other option to time time is very important and one when you once you give enough time to your uh, close ones that is wife and children and parents then you allocate your time to your uh, devotee friends and uh, vaishnavas and services and their relationships with you you have to have a sankalpa you know everything has to be a plan it cannot be just spontaneous you cannot just go out and then two days you just stayed with your friends and you just did not bother to call your wife and children and they were hankering and wondering where you are it shouldn't be emotionally impulsive activity it should be a reasonably planned activity reasonably planned to give time to your wife and children mother and father and reasonably planned activity with their knowledge and acceptance and approval with devotees and services outside because neglect is one of the most detrimental things to the happiness in family life you cannot be you know our we, we sometimes uh, a spiritual slang we use you can't be too transcendental you know you have to be practical uh, because you need love and your family needs love you have to give time to express your love and affection satisfactorily so much that they should say okay you can go uh, on a tour of preaching for eight days and even though you go to give time to devotees and for their relationships if possible take them with you and do the activity or if you have to go alone and do the activity but keep in touch with them give time every day on the phone to beloved like my uh, older daughter is married and i am now away in himalayas but we talk regularly to express our love and and our uh, affection and uh, we do things which make them make her feel that we love her so similarly time uh, allotment is very important for sadhana for earning money for health to wife and husband wife and husband children and then but and then the devotees but you cannot deprive your family intimate family by giving more time to outsiders neglecting them so do attend to your family first and then give time and balance it out naturally i am i am very clear about in my talk that the time given to others is lesser than time given to your own close family members does that answer your question hare krishna prabhu yeah it was very nice uh, we are nice all duty bound please understand and duty means you have to give time appropriately to the uh, duties of priority but as you said uh, i have another continuing question that does the point come where you know some many devotees tell that the family people never give you uh, an approval that okay now it's done you give enough time to us now we can go and do something else it is always there that like they always the times but if you have already satisfied them by giving them enough time and then you go with determination they will not criticize you and even if they criticize you then you do your duties because you have already given them enough time some people are too demanding you know some mothers or some wives or some children are too demanding they never they want to just stick to you all the time but still you have to go to work no you go to work 8 hours 10 hours maybe you people are working 12 hours 14 hours a day i don't know so 
still you go because you know you are duty bound to do many things at one time simultaneously but do not fail from your side to give time to your near ones from your side you should not feel ki oh i only neglected them i didn't give them time especially when your near ones are not well they are physically ill should give your all attention to them because difficult times of sickness or pregnancy or delivery or newborn child or um, some other heavy conflicts in your wife's house you need to assure your wife that you are concerned and you care you cannot say i care i care i care they have to feel that you care that is more important than your words any other question mata ji any questions are there mata ji mata ji sai any questions no bro ji i think uh, okay. we are all done we are very grateful to uh, i i'll ask you personally bro ji i have something related to astro- i wanted to bring one more thing to everybody's knowledge that prabhu ji has he has known several uh, couples right from the time of getting them even married prabhu ji would have conducted at least thousands of marriage ceremonies he's expert at all the shastras and doing all that ast- expert at astrology and all that so he has done marriages of thousands of couples so he knows all their lives right from the point of you know getting married till the time of having kids and even after that so all that expertise roji has so that's why he is able to you know very pin pointedly able to give all the practical solutions of how exactly grest the life goes within the purview of uh, krishna consciousness so we are very grateful roji uh, here i think the prasadam should correct shipments. you here uh, i have done hundreds of marriages not thousands of marriages <laughs> 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 yes roj okay. uh, we are very grateful roj to take your time and uh, in spite of your busy schedule today you could give time and uh, with this note we would like to end today's uh, roj uh, we would be happy if we can get the recording of today's class yes yes it's only being recorded as soon as it ends i will upload and i'll send it to you then you can send it to all those who are there and uh, i'll be happy to I'll meet you all again at a different forum on zoom or virtually or physically and uh, i feel very inspired to see young young people taking up krishna consciousness young men and women getting married in krishna consciousness and aspiring for happy krishna conscious married life i feel very inspired and i see lot of hope in young grahastha couples uh, who will take forward the mission of prabhu pad and make themselves happy first in their life and make others happy by their wonderful examples of happy krishna conscious life in married life thank you very much roji but because we have very big ideals like all of you to follow <laughs> now we are also trying our best we are not the best ideals but we are trying our best but i can tell you that we are very happy in krishna consciousness in grahastha life that i can tell you for sure very happy satisfied and blissful and we wish you also all of you to become happy in your rest of life thank you prabhu ji thank you very much hare krishna prabhu ji uh, will we we'll, uh, chant together one mantra yes prabhu hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram ram ram, 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 ram hare 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 krishna hare krishna 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 hare hare हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे थैंक यू वेरी मच हरि बोल